Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, and can I extend that welcome to those who are watching on screens and various other buildings around us here. On behalf of the University of Strathclyde, I would like to welcome you all to the Barony Hall for this congregation for the conferment of degrees. This is a day of celebration for you, our graduates, your families and friends, and the staff of the university. These events are sometimes known as commencement ceremonies as a signal that they mark a beginning rather than the end. And it's in that spirit that we celebrate graduations here at Strathclyde. In a few moments, it will be my privilege to cap each graduate. The capping ceremony has ancient roots as a public rite of passage and a mark of achievement. For each of our graduates, it's a sign they're part of a proud tradition of world-changing scholars at Strathclyde, stretching back to the Scottish Enlightenment. Enjoy the ceremony, and despite the drich weather outside, feel free to clap, cheer, wherever let your spirit rise. I declare this congregation open, and I invite Professor Sarah Carter to introduce our alumna of the year, Baroness Noshina Mubarak. Chancellor, I have the honour to present to you Baroness Noshina Mubarak. Graduands, friends, families, colleagues, I'm delighted to introduce Lady Mubarak to you all. Today we are celebrating the class of 2017. This is your day. Many congratulations to you and your families. You've earned your degree and the right to stand proud as a graduate of the University of Strathclyde. You now join a strong community of over 157,000 alumni. And as you take your next steps in your careers, you can continue to put useful learning into practice. The University of Strathclyde is rightly proud of the achievements of our alumni and each year we celebrate the outstanding achievements of our alumni through our alumnus, or in this case, Alumna of the Year Award. This special award is one of the ways the university recognises and celebrates the outstanding contributions which its alumni make in their chosen field in the UK and overseas. Recipients of the award are inspirational individuals and role models for Strathclyde students, staff, alumni and the wider community. This is particularly true in the case of today's recipient, Baroness Noshina Mubarak. The award recognises Noshina's outstanding contributions to business and to charity and his recognition of the groundbreaking achievements which she has made to our community. Baroness Noshina Mubarak is one of the most influential women in Scotland today, a global Scot who has championed business development and greater social cohesion within Scotland and internationally. Noshina graduated with a BA Ons in Economic and Social History in 1991 and went on to become the founder and joint chief executive of M Computer Technologies, a software company that develops and implements business management solutions for the retail sector. She is the first Asian and only the second woman to chair the Scottish arm of the Confederation of British Industry, where she has been a vociferous champion of small businesses. But in addition to her very successful entrepreneurial career, she has also contributed significantly to voluntary and charitable organisations. Baroness Mubarak is the founder and convener of the Scotland-Pakistan Network, which facilitates business, cultural and educational exchange between the two countries, and is also chair of the Pakistan-Britain Trade and Investment Forum, an organisation which increases bilateral trade and investment between the two countries. Nishina has encouraged Scots of all ages to visit other parts of the world in order to understand the lives of others. She believes that 
although globalization brings us ever closer in some ways, in others it creates an ever widening gulf, making it incumbent on all of us to try to help bring about positive change in eradicating poverty and bridging the gap between people of different faiths and cultures. Baroness Mubarak has held many positions in Scottish public life. She is a director and trustee of Craig Home School and a board member of the Glasgow Film Theatre. She was a founder of the, the Save the Bosnian People campaign, a member of the International and Commercial Committee of the Scottish Qualifications Authority, and is a board member of Annie's Land College. Lady Mubarak has organised many fundraising events for various good causes over the years. Indeed, her business and philanthropic work has been recognised by several national honours and honorary degrees. She was awarded an OBE to ser for services to business in 2004, upgraded to a CBE for services to business and public service in Scotland in 2014, and that same year, Nushina was appointed a life peer as the Baroness Mubarak of Mearns in the county of Renfrewshire. And as a member of the House of Lords, she has been particularly vocal in the debate of the modern slavery bill. Nushina was also awarded a national award, the Tamgar e Imtiaz Medal for Excellence by the State of Pakistan in 2012. Throughout her career, Nushina has displayed ambition, boldness, and innovation. She is collaborative and people focused committed to improving individual lives and mutual understanding between communities. These are deep and abiding values that underpin the Strathclyde community. It is with great pleasure, therefore, Chancellor, that I ask you to present the Alumna of the Year Award to Baroness Nushina Mubarak. Chancellor, Professor Carter, graduates, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm deeply honoured to be amongst previous eminent recipients of this award. It's wonderful to be here. The year that I graduated, 1991, was the very first year that the then newly refurbished Barony Hall was used for the university's graduation ceremonies. And returning here today, I find it no less impressive and captivating a space as I did then. I came to Strathclyde as a mature student uh, in my late 20s and always thought of myself as a slow starter. And so would never have expected that years later, I would be receiving such an award. I had undertaken higher education study prior to coming here, but it was here at Strathclyde that I found real motivation. That desire to learn, to seek knowledge, better to understand the world. This great university provided that spark. And like me, how fortunate you are that you have had such excellent teachers and have been part of this great institution and of the Business School, which was named Business School of the Year in the Times Higher Education Awards of 2016, as well as being a recipient of the Gold Award, recognition of its world-leading support for scaling Scottish firms through innovation, internationalisation and leadership. And in computer and information science too, it is a leading information science research group in Scotland and in the UK top three. You can rightly be proud of your achievements. You are being rewarded for putting in your best effort, for staying the course and reaching your goal. Many congratulations to you all. The intensity of study that you have just undergone is unlikely to be repeated 
unless you go on to postgraduate research or study or an academic career. But whatever else you go on to do, learning, although perhaps not as intense, should never stop. And if you want to remain a relevant and contemporary person, then it continues throughout your life. I am minded of the words of the great philosopher and poet of the East as he is known, Sir Muhammad Alama Iqbal, who spoke about the importance of continuous change and of not becoming static. In his philosophy of revolution, his message is that it is of the utmost importance for a progressive nation that its imagination and thought should always be lively and novel, restless and inquiring, creative and inspiring. Some of you will go on to work in large companies and organizations, and others, no doubt, go on to establish your own businesses. Small businesses are often the unsung heroes of the economy. Long hours, trial and error, giving up holidays, and many other sacrifices. One thing that is required is in abundance in running a small business is perseverance. Most things outside of work have to be forgone. In my case, there was one thing which I didn't do, and that was to give up the time that I spent on voluntary and charitable interests. And what allowed me to do that was having a business partner who was sympathetic to such extracurricular activities. And I must acknowledge my husband and business partner who is here today and who is also a former graduate of this university. I involved myself in things that I believed were important, as well as things which offered the opportunity to learn something new. I'd like to mention my late parents, who were inspirational and unique individuals, and whose influence was so important in my life. They believed in and acted upon helping others, giving freely of their time and wealth. They had a strong belief in public service, and I believe that anything that I may have achieved in life is in great part due to their influence. My engagement with various organisations and with the business community in Scotland in particular has been hugely rewarding, and I feel privileged to have served that community and to be in a position now to serve my country as a parliamentarian. I firmly believe that business can be a force for good. Indeed, that it has a responsibility to make the world a better place, to provide opportunity and bring about social as well as economic prosperity. We often hear the words corporate social responsibility. And certainly business has the responsibility to do good and benefit society. But what is often less stated, and a matter on which I feel very strongly, is that business, at the very least, should do no harm. We are faced with many challenges. Increasing urbanization in the developing world, ever-growing need for resources, food, water, and energy for growing populations, inequality and poverty but also satisfying the demands of a growing middle-class population. These challenges need a collective effort, and that means the efforts of both men and women. Those countries which refuse to acknowledge the talent of women and refuse to nurture it, then they do so at their cost, for it is going to become an even more unforgiving world. In a world of economic challenges and in many places political turmoil, it can be easy to become despondent. But I believe that as individuals and in our own small way, we must continue to work to bring about effective change. I feel sure that understanding between communities and countries can be created through cultural exchange and dialogue and also through trade and investment. Another challenge that we face is a widening gulf between peoples of different faiths. Taking the time to share our views in a constructive and positive way with others from a different religious and cultural background 
is vital. Indeed, it is ever more critical that we try to understand each other's perspective, be sensitive to and respectful of each other's beliefs. I still remember the words of Rabbi Levy when he spoke at a multi-faith prayer vigil, which I organized in 1995 at the Glasgow City Chambers. This was in support of the people of Bosnia soon after the massacre at Srebrenica during the Balkans War. Rabbi Levy, himself a survivor of the Holocaust, kept repeating one sentence throughout his speech, and it was this, when all the fighting and killing is done, we still have to live with each other. We still have to learn to live with each other. Those were simple but profound words. I have no doubt that you individually will play your part in creating a more prosperous and harmonious world. Of course, life is mostly about working hard to make a living, taking care of family and enjoying oneself, and rightly so. But you will also be in the position to reach out to others less fortunate and to help bring about that positive change. You are embarking on a great adventure, so grasp it with both hands Work hard, persevere in whatever you do. There will be times in life, however, when you have to be flexible and change direction and follow a new dream. Have the courage to do that when you need to. Each and every one of you has the capacity to achieve great things. So I wish you success in your endeavors and true happiness in life. I thank you for this great honor which you have bestowed upon me I will continue to strive to be deserving of this. My Lord and Chancellor, in the name of the University and by the authority of Senate, I present to you these students. For the degree of Doctor of Philosophy for Research in the Department of Economics, Loa Leonardus Christina Franzen. Shukrat Komumanov. For research in the Department of Human Resource Management, Andrew Brady. Andrew John Bratton. Joseph Anthony McCarthy. <laughs> Photius Mitsakis. <laughs> Kenneth Monroe. For research in the department of the Hunter Center for Entrepreneurship, Carolyn McMillan. <laughs> For research in the department of management science, Sharifa Aisha Binti Said Ali. For research in the Department of Marketing, Michael Andreas Nicholas Schellenberg. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Science in Finance, Ji-Yu Tan.
in international accounting and finance, Anne Hui Ru. <laughs> Zhao Zhao Chen. <laughs> Han Gao. Ning Nyan He. Leonardus Ario Venario. Wu Jia Jun. Zhen Zhao Wen. <laughs> Zhu Li. <laughs> In international banking and finance, Adriana Cacinel. Maria Kipriotaki. <laughs> Jerina Nyasha Manzi Sibanda. <laughs> in, inter in investment in finance, Gurmender Singh Atwa. Hornswang Gislet Paisan. <laughs> Lee Kehui. <laughs> In finance and management, Ying Hao Teng. In Applied Economics, Rory Ian Ferguson. In Human Resource Management, Mary Hunter Brighton. Jill Grimmond. Morag Henderson. <laughs> Alistair Kenneth Hepburn. <laughs> Gunnar Herzog. Anne McGregor. <laughs> Mary McNeil. <laughs> Victoria Robertson. Barry Jeanette Shields. <laughs> Anne Marie Stevenson. <laughs> In international human resource management, Wang Fang. In operational research, Richard William Hamilton. <laughs> Arun Raj Kumaran Krishnan. <laughs> K. 
Catherine McCrindle. In business analysis and consulting, Pallavi Agarwal. <laughs> Mohammed Idris Aisa. <laughs> Maria Alexieva. <laughs> Simon Altavisha. Valerie Liliana Aponte Rivero. <laughs> Umar Ayub. <laughs> Juan Munira Binti Juan Abdullah Sabari. Diana Chitulescu. <laughs> Constantinos Gavrielidis. <laughs> Susanna Audrey Elizabeth Gone. <laughs> Sunil Daniel Gill. Fang Guan. <laughs> Javis Ho. <laughs> Eleonora Imbert. <laughs> Kathleen Teresa Kilroy. Martin Jan Chorus. <laughs> Maria McInnes. <laughs> Alan Martin. <laughs> Zainab Zana Mohammed. Helena Mund. <laughs> Zahari Ninov. <laughs> Athanasios Panagiotidis. <laughs> In marketing. Yi Ching Chen. <laughs> For the degree of Master of International Business with Modern Languages, Emma Louise Anderson. <laughs> Christina Margaret Backler. Julie Kate Bendel. <laughs> Gillian Boyle. <laughs> Cara Elizabeth Kearney. <laughs> Sara Corrieri. Lisa Rose Cross. <laughs> Ed
Ella Charlotte Forbes. Rachel Sarah Garvey. Matthew James Goodge. Lewis Howell. Shannon, Christina, and Jess. Isla, Melissa, McDonald. Lauren McFarlane. Lauren Ann McGrath. <laughs> Francis McGreechan. <laughs> Ailey Louise Martin. <laughs> Lindsay Martin. Gillian Elizabeth Masterson. Joanne Mills. Corey Sinclair Morland. Emily Victoria Morrison. <laughs> Fraser Port. Erin <laughs> Ann Margaret Ramsey. <laughs> Louisa Marie Oroni. Claire Smith. Grant David Archibald Thompson. Evelina Svetkova. Ely Turnbull. <laughs> Rebecca Walker. <laughs> Sarah Waters. <laughs> Catherine Theodora Wiley. For the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Human Resource Management and Marketing, Chantelle McSharry. In International Business with Business Analysis and Technology, Gavin James Allen. Rebecca Kate Lester. Iona Murphy. Anna Maria Alexandra Senoste. Lauren Elizabeth Thompson. <laughs> Chris
Craig Agnew. Iona Elizabeth Fletcher. Ross Lament. Andrew James Stewart. In international business with business enterprise, Rory Fraser McPherson. Paul Anthony Slavin. Scott Grant. Cameron Robert William Johnston. Campbell Patterson. Michael Douglas Robertson. Christopher James Russell. Ailey Stuart Harding. In international business with economics, Evie Rachel Burrows. Desislava Andrieva Georgieva. <laughs> Ellie Carla Rear. Lucy Ronald. Danielle Russell. Catherine Shedden. Katerina Vachova. Robert Adam Hodson Forrester. <laughs> Brian Gillespie. <laughs> Athenaeus Agapi Petrona. <laughs> Rihanna Ellen Steele. In international business with finance, Matthias Law. <laughs> Ra Rachel Jane Morrison. <laughs> Stanislas de Chazo Bote. Monica Ubora Vichuti. <laughs> In international business with hospitality and tourism management, Lauren McLeod. <laughs> Ellis Jones Pettigrew. Maximilian Tecci. Georgina Claire Mountford.
in International Business with Human Resource Management, Fern Barclay. Monica Latarieva. James McInnes. Samantha Alexandra McIntosh. Bethany Marion Catherine McCurdy. Ramiz Tariq. In international business with management, Claudia Campbell. Yan Ping Ma. Jack Young. In international business with marketing, Ailey Linda Bryson. Elitsa Krasimirova Kostova. Andrew Early. Sarah Jane Aitchison. Lisa Baird. Jack Bradbury. Lauren Brady. Sarah Dorian. Cara Marie Doris. Rihanna Lauren Duffy. Rachel Hannah Gillespie. Nicole Gillian Gilmore. Calvin Kai Woon Hu. Eva Kirilova Ivanova. Emily Charlotte Louise Jekyll. Lauren Taylor Kennedy. Shannon Marie O'Rourke. Kieran Quigley. Guillermo Rico Escudero. Iona Shankland. Robin Alexander Sloan. Andrei Rumenov Stoyanov. Ryan Allen Williamson. <laughs> Sarah, 
Simona Julian Georgieva. In international business with modern languages, Rhys Gavin. <laughs> Melanie Louise Roos. <laughs> Adam Thomas Wallace. My Lord and Chancellor, in the name of the University and by the authority of Senate, I present to you these students for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy for Research in the Department of Pure, sorry, of, of Computer and Information Sciences, Bedad Abdul Alim Mustahil Rakhulut. For the degree of Master of Science in Information and Library Studies, Demetrius Demitsas. <laughs> Claire Evie Danny Miller. <clears throat> For the degree of Master of Engineering in Computer Science, Callum Alexander Magari. <laughs> Angus Oliver Arnold. <laughs> Gregor Cannon. <laughs> Cameron Caldwell Clark. Stuart Alexander Cuthbertson. <laughs> Liam Anthony Diamond. <laughs> Callum McCulloch. <laughs> Fraser McEwen. Stuart Edwin Ian Maynard. <laughs> Liam Joseph O'Donnell. <laughs> Aidan O'Grady. <laughs> Adam Papa Giorgio. Christine Semjanova. <laughs> Grant Toghill. <laughs> In Computer and Electronic Systems, Robbie Hamill. Gary Andrew Henderson. <laughs> Adam Kidd. <laughs> Greg Andrew Law. <laughs> Adam Alexander Liddell. Kieran Joseph McFadden. <laughs> B. 
Baldeep Singh Sanghera. Charlotte Alexandra Wilson. In Computer and Electronic Systems with International Study, Heristo Svilnov Heristov. <laughs> For the degree of Bachelor of Engineering in Computer and Electronic Systems, Roman O'Dowd. Zeng Shin. <laughs> Craig Ramsey. <laughs> Samantha Call. <laughs> Adrian Piret. Samuel Watt. <laughs> Myhel Milchev Myhelov. <laughs> For the degree of Bachelor of Science in Business Information Systems, Arina Camilleri. Blair Callum Anderson. <laughs> Darren Tiang. <laughs> Louise Watson. <laughs> In computer science, Umar Nazim Akhtar. <laughs> Jonathan Baird. <laughs> Fraser Robert Beaton. <laughs> Trianta Filos Bozos. James Neil Cribbs. <laughs> Stephen Dundas. <laughs> Rory Gallagher. <laughs> Liam Garvey. Alice Dare Thomas Hill. <laughs> Innocentini Massimo. <laughs> James Keenan. <laughs> Amy Logan. Kieran McDermott. <laughs> James Bruce McLeod. <laughs> Kieran Meehan. <laughs> Ramsey Stephen Meeklam. Benjamin Roberts. <laughs> mm. 
Andrew Graham Glassford Scott. Scott Michael Spears. <laughs> Kerry Thompson. <laughs> Robert Wilson. <laughs> Callum Alexander Anderson. Graham Devlin. <laughs> Peter Donahue. <laughs> Scott Ellis. <laughs> Callum Scott Grant. Jonathan Andrew Hanlon. <laughs> Lauren Mary McElhaney. <laughs> Stuart McInnes. <laughs> Jordan Melville. Mark James Mullen. <laughs> Colin Thomas Park. <laughs> Cameron Phillips. <laughs> Blaine Pollock. David George Rioch. <laughs> Darren Robertson. <laughs> Kieran Scott. <laughs> Said Omer Nabi Shah. Kieran Sharp. <laughs> Nicholas Anthony Barry Stanage. <laughs> Leo Ferdinando Coya. Ian George James Crawford. <laughs> Jack Dempster. <laughs> Paul Ford. <laughs> Jack Henderson. Jackie Man Yip Lee. <laughs> Alan McPhee. <laughs> Derek Clark. <laughs> Philip Ivers. Michael Andrew Duddy. <laughs> Martin Parry. <laughs> mm. 
in computer science with law, Greg Roots. <laughs> Ross Alexander Cook. <laughs> Katrina Elizabeth Munn. In Software Engineering, Scott Barber. <laughs> Scott Blair. <laughs> Ross Chammers. <laughs> Patrick Mitius Dombrovsky. Michael Craig. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Science in Business Analysis and Consulting, Kastrina Lakanova. For the degree of Master of Science in Information Management, Shaquille Hamad. Well, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen and colleagues, but most of all, graduates, as we can now call you, it's a real pleasure to welcome you here to Barony Hall, one of the jewels in Strathclyde's crown. Now, rightly, our graduates have been centre stage, and I would like to begin my address today by congratulating you once again on your academic achievements. Your hard work has paid off, and it's now been recognised in front of your families friends, and the staff who taught and supported you during your time here. We know just how much work you had to put in to get here today. The late Muhammad Ali once said, the fight is won or lost, far away from witnesses, in the gym, out there on the road, long before I dance under these lights. And you know, there's a symmetry between success in sport and academic success. In both only a few see the hard work required to triumph. Our gym is in the library and the lab, the lecture theater and the tutorial. And today, under the lights of this magnificent venue, we celebrate your efforts and your achievements. Well done. In just a few minutes' time, you will be asked to join the academic procession as it makes its way down the aisle. This invitation symbolizes the fact you're no longer students, but full members of the academic community of Strathclyde. It's an important moment for you all. The class of 2017 is graduating at a time of considerable global change. In Scotland, in the UK, in Europe, internationally. There is no question that challenges lie ahead for all of us. But as a member of the Strathclyde family, you belong to a large and ever-growing worldwide community which has a shared ethos of tolerance and understanding and a desire to make a positive difference. 
Whatever you choose to do in life, remember you possess the most valuable assets anyone can have in today's world. Knowledge, the ability to innovate, and the capacity to use your talents for the good of society. And as graduates of a socially progressive university, you have a competitive advantage, having been equipped with the skills, the know-how, and the life experiences to influence positively, shape the world around you. In Scotland, we are fortunate in having a higher education system which is the envy of the world. Our country rightly invests in education for all. Education broadens the mind and it creates opportunities for individuals and for societies. And as Strathclyders, we carry a sense of duty to use what we've learned wisely and for the good of others. The desire to make a positive impact in the world comes naturally, of course, to graduates of this university. You only have to look at the achievements of those who've gone before for inspiration. To John Anderson, our founder, who established this university for the good of mankind. To George Birkbeck, who introduced free classes on mechanics for Glasgow's tradesmen. To the world's first oilman, James Paraffin Young. To the missionary and explorer, David Livingstone. To John Logie Baird and Lord Reith, whose work in television brought us visual marvels that they couldn't have dreamt of. And in the present day, we look to Dame Elish Angiolini, a pioneer in Scottish justice as the country's first female Solicitor General and later its first female Lord Advocate. And to Sir Tom Hunter, one of the most successful entrepreneurs in Scottish history and a philanthropist who's used his great wealth for the benefit of others as we recently saw in the charity dinner organized by his foundation and attended by former US President Barack Obama. Now, I'm sure you will have been given lots of advice on how to make the best of your lives. Some you will rightly ignore. Some will stick with you, but you know, most you're going to have to learn for yourself. Robert Louis Stevenson put it well when he said, don't judge each day by the harvest you reap, but by the seeds that you plant. To reach this point in your lives today, each of you will have traveled a different journey. For some, the path will have been relatively easy, and for others, much more difficult. But I'm certain of one thing. None of you would be here without the active support of your family and friends. They've picked you up when you've been down, they've encouraged you when you needed it, and they're here today to support you once again, proudly watching as you cross the stage with broad smiles and I notice the odd tear in the odd eye. They are celebrating today, not just because you're almost off the payroll, although that's a cause for celebration in its own, <laughs> but because you carry with you their hopes and their dreams, their confidence that you can make this a better world. Well, for the past half hour or so, their applause has rung in your ears. I'd like now to invite our graduates to show their appreciation of the support of their family and friends. Now, we will actively keep in touch with you through our alumni and communications team. And I would ask that you too, please keep in touch with us. We'd love to hear about your achievements as you progress through life and your careers, and we look forward to hearing from you again. The advice and guidance given by our alumni helped to provide the first-class education and student experience that you all had. I now ask that you think of those who will follow in your footsteps. I touched earlier on some of the key figures who have helped create the University of Strathclyde. You can tell a lot about the values of an organization by looking at its roots. Strathclyde traces its lineage back to 1796 when Anderson brought it into being, the only Scottish university founded in the Enlightenment and embodying Enlightenment principles of reason, of tolerance, and of equality. Anderson believed in useful learning and his commitment to taking knowledge and using it for the greater good is the motivating force which gives Strathclyde its momentum today. It can be seen in our business school, 
which was named Business School of the Year in a prestigious UK Times Education Award. It can be seen at our advanced forming research centre, which sets new standards in design and manufacturing and which has more than doubled in size to meet industry demand. And it can be seen at our £89 million technology and innovation centre, which is transforming the way academics collaborate with business, industry and the public sector to bring global competitive advantage to Scotland. TIC, as it's fondly known, is a tangible sign of the university's commitment to world-class research and ensuring outcomes that have maximum benefit to society and the economy. And these represent a small sample of the many innovative projects and initiatives led by our world-class academic and professional services colleagues who are taking new knowledge and using it to solve problems in industry and the classroom and in boardrooms. And I'm especially pleased we're developing our campus to enable us to do even more. Our business school's flagship building has been transformed with a 23.2 million investment. We are about to give, begin work on a 60 million pound teaching and learning hub and a 31 million pound sport health and wellbeing centre, bringing our total expenditure on the state to 650 million pounds in the last decade alone. So too, it's been a year to celebrate for the faculties. Business School Executive Dean, Professor David Hillier, was named Public Sector Director of the Year at the Institute of Directors Awards. The judging panel commended him for his strong and visible leadership. Strathclyde International Business student, Kirsten Alexander McGarry, was named Management Undergraduate of the Year at the Target Jobs Undergraduate of the Year Award. Dr. Mazamul Huck in economics received the Judges Award and the Inspiring Cities Award. It was made in recognition of his work as Chairman of the Charity Education International, an organisation which aims to promote educational opportunities and medical help to poor and underprivileged people in northern Bangladesh. Research associate Dr. Holly Butler in Pure and Applied Chemistry was named winner of the Converge Challenge, Scotland's largest academic startup prize. She gave the winning pitch on her technology, a simple blood test to detect brain tumours earlier. Professor Nicholas Lockerbie in physics won the President's Medal from the Royal Society of Edinburgh and a special breakthrough prize medal for fundamental physics for his role in the International Research Project, which detected the existence of gravitational waves. And that project confirmed a major prediction of Albert Einstein's 1915 general theory of relativity. The latter award was also made to Sharat Jawahar and Dr. Kirill Tokmakov, both in physics. Dr. Uh, Professor Eva Hevia and Dr. Matthew Baker, both in pure and applied chemistry, were honored by the Royal Society of Chemistry for their contributions to science. They received respectively the Corday Morgan Prize awarded for the most meritorious contributions to chemistry and the Harrison Mildola Memorial Prize awarded for the most meritorious and promising original investigations in chemistry. That is why our graduates are so highly prized by companies looking to recruit the best talent to drive their businesses forward. That is why world-class companies like Rolls-Royce, GSK and Boeing are investing in Strathclyde. And that is why we're leading research in energy, health, manufacturing and technology. Our success is no small part due to the collective talent, effort and commitment of our staff. The 3,200 colleagues who are pulling together to deliver one vision, a leading international technological university. Like me, they are very proud of your achievements. I know that the class of 2017 will demonstrate the power of useful learning. I know that you will make your dreams a reality, and I know you will make a difference to the world in which we all live. Thank you. I now declare closed this congregation for the conferment of degrees. I would like to invite graduates to join the academic procession 
And would family and friends please stay behind until the procession has left the building? And then, subject to weather, Billy Connolly, who received an honorary doctorate here last Thursday, said there are two seasons in Scotland, June and winter. And I think we're just coming to the end of June here. Uh, to the extent we can process without these gowns shrinking, we will see you in the Lord Todd building very shortly. Please could you stand as the procession comes through. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.